hey y'all welcome back to my channel this cake that you see right here took me 10 hours to make let me explain flashback to Wednesday the first thing I did was bake the cakes this is the cake mix that I use and I just follow the instructions in the back I baked two cakes to make this cake so just keep that in mind on the box is said to crack three eggs so I'm cracking three eggs Then one cup of water. Instead of using vegetable oil, I used extra virgin olive oil. That was the only thing that I had and it still turned out delicious. And then I added the cake mix to the bowl. And now you mix until smooth. Y'all, this hand mixer is 15 years old and it still works like it's brand new. Every time I take it out, it just brings really good memories from when I was younger because me and my mom, we would bake cakes all the time. My mom wouldn't really let us eat sugar, so this was like gold to us. Moving along, sprayed some spam. I sprayed some Pam onto my pan so the cake won't stick. I rubbed it all over the pan. I grabbed about 10 Oreos per cake and I crushed them up. I didn't want them finely crushed up. I poured it into my cake batter and I mixed it. This cake was for my sister and apparently she said she wanted a confetti cake. Clearly what you're seeing here is not a confetti cake, it's an Oreo cake. I think I just forgot or maybe I wasn't paying attention to what she was telling me. I had texted her though and I told her that I would make her an Oreo cake and she just replied with okay so I assumed it was okay. At the end she loved the Oreo cake so that's all that matters. I'm glad she enjoyed it. As you can see here I used a circular pan. Girl don't do it. If you're making a heart shaped cake use a heart shaped pan. This is where everything went wrong because then you're going to have to shape a circle into a heart and it may seem easy if you watch some videos but no, it's hard. This was just my personal experience but you do you. You do you. Don't forget to put the pans back in the oven then your mama's going to start yelling at you. My cake was really sticking to the pan so I had to use a fork to loosen it up. This was my first time freezing a cake. Yes, girl, I froze a cake. And it was the best thing I have ever done. It saved me so much time. I was really scared that it would get stale, but no, it was as moist as ever. I wrapped it in saran wrap and I also wrapped it in foil. I put it in the freezer and I took it out on Friday. I let the cake defrost three hours before decorating the cake. Fast forward to Friday around 2 p.m. I began with making my filling. I added almost a full pint of this heavy whipping cream. I just took away 8 tablespoons of it because I used that for my buttercream. I added this cheesecake flavored jello pudding thing, whatever this is. I feel like if I added the Oreo flavored one, it would have tasted 10 times better. Instead of my handy dandy hand mixer, I switched over to this KitchenAid mixer with the wire whip attachment. The speed was at 4. I think this is about 1 tablespoon of vanilla extract. I don't know. I turned it back on and I felt like it was too thick, very thick for my liking. I added milk to it, about, I don't know, three, four, five tablespoons. No, I think about three, right? Ugh, I should have measured it. But you get the point. And it made it more smoother. I was more happier with this consistency.
since this is an Oreo cake, I was like, well, might as well make an Oreo filling. So that's what I did. I crushed up about 15 Oreos, poured it into the filling. I used half of the crushed up Oreos and I mixed it all together. If you're a baker or someone who makes cakes, is this how filling is supposed to look like? Is it supposed to be this thick? Let me know. I switched over to my flat beater attachment and this is what I used to make my buttercream. I was using the salt bottle as like a stand for my phone so I forgot to add it into my mixture but it's okay. It was still good. I added about 8 sticks of this unsalted butter. I left it out overnight. I left it mixing for about 10 minutes at the lowest speed. Throughout those 10 minutes, I checked up on it and stopped it about 3 times and I scraped all the edges and everything around. Maybe I was just overthinking it, it just felt like it was too soft and I was really scared to move forward. So I popped it in the fridge for about 5 minutes. After 5 minutes, I felt more comfortable adding more stuff to it. You can't really tell the difference, but you can definitely feel the difference. I used about one bag and half of another bag for my powdered sugar. I used a colander to make sure that there was no clumps. Fun fact, around 2021, I actually wanted to become a baker, but making this cake just reminded me why I stopped. This was stressful. Once I added all the powdered sugar, I mixed it with my spatula and then I mixed it with my KitchenAid at the lowest speed. Three minutes later, it became something like this. And now I added the 8 tablespoons of heavy whipping cream that I was talking about earlier. I microwaved it for about 10 seconds and I added it to the butter with a tablespoon of vanilla extract. When I used to make cakes, I never added the whipping cream. I noticed that it made it more fluffier. The recipe was good, I just felt like it was a little too soft for my liking. It was to the point where the buttercream was literally melting off the cake when I was doing a crumb coat. It was about 90 degrees this day, so that might have been the reason why. Who knows? This is how I make my simple syrup. It's super easy. All you need is a cup of water. You put it in the microwave for about a minute. Take it out. Put 5 tablespoons of sugar. It doesn't really matter how much. And you stir it around while it's still hot and you're done. I grabbed my piping bag and added some frosting to it. I decided to make the whole cake white with pink decor. I bought these circular cake boards at Michael's. I placed my first layer. I poked some holes with a fork. I really wanted my cake to be as moist as possible. I added my simple syrup all around the cake. When I say all, I mean all around the cake. I didn't want my filling to go all over the place, so I made this border around the cake. I put three big spoonfuls of the filling. I evenly mixed it all around. Low key, the filling looks kind of gross not gonna lie <laughs> but anyways i placed my second cake on top i did the same process i poked some holes added simple syrup and i started doing my crumb coat
if you guys take a closer look at the frosting you could kind of see it melting this is exactly what i meant when i said that this frosting was too soft Once I was done with my crumb co, I froze it for about 5 minutes and it became really hard which was good but here's where I was struggling the most. I tried to shape it into a heart, I searched up videos and a lot of people did it like this. Um, no, I will never do this method ever again. I tried my best to do another crumb coat but it just didn't work out so I decided to take those pieces that I cut off and just shade the cake into a heart myself. This is how she turned out. Clearly it's not the best. It looks kind of wonky. I did the job and that's all that matters. This is the piping tip that I used to fully cover my cake. On top of the crumb coat that I had already done, I did this crumb coat and I did another coat of buttercream. This part took me the longest just because it was going to be my final coat of buttercream. So I had to make sure that everything was as smooth and even. I was done with that and now it was time to decorate which I was really nervous about but I think I did pretty good. I used this tip to make ruffles around the cake. I added pink gel food coloring to my frosting to make this pink color. Honestly, I didn't like it but I couldn't go back because I was running out of frosting. She's looking decent, okay, don't judge her. I moved on to the next piping tip and used this to make this weird looking border thing. To tell you the truth, I really don't know what I was doing. I was just doing designs that were just easy for me to do. I did that. She was looking as good as me. I bought these cherries and they're wet so I dried them and I placed eight on the cake. I did make sure that every cherry was aligned with one another. I placed it in the fridge overnight. Y'all think I was done? Girl, no. I was not done. 
when I was going to sleep, I was just thinking about the cake and I knew it needed more. So you know what I did? I added more. I bought this chocolate and I melted it for about one minute. I didn't use a lot of it. This is the gel food coloring that I've been using throughout my video. I matched the color of the chocolate to the pink frosting that I made. I asked my sister what exactly she wanted me to write or put on her cake. She said she didn't care so I just put happy birthday. I put my mold in the freezer for 5 minutes and they were ready. I took them out and I used a toothpick to take out all the extra chocolate that was left on my letters. I placed the letters on the cake and pressed them down so they won't move around. I was going to stop here, but the more I kept looking at it, the more I wanted to do more with it. So you know what I did? I added more. I used this piping tip and I had extra pink frosting, so I made these weird looking roses all over the cake. I made green frosting and I used this piping tip to pipe some leaves. At this point, I was more confident in what I was doing, and that confidence got to me. So you know what I did? I added more to the cake! Duh! I forgot that I had these chocolate molds. I decided to mold some flowers with the extra chocolate that I had. I made eight roses and used this piping tip to make a vine around the cake. I still do not know exactly what I did to do this, but my creativity was at its highest at this time. And then I placed the chocolate roses in between the cherries. Surprisingly, decorating the cake was so much more easier than assembling the cake. I thought it was going to be the other way around. Clearly, I was wrong. And of course, I piped some more leaves. Just in case you were wondering, these are all the piping tips that I use throughout this video. I use some small ones and big ones. And this is the final result.
and I'm so happy with how this cake turned out guys especially as a beginner I have never done a cake like this even though it did take me 10 hours to make I was relieved and satisfied thank you guys so much for following along and sticking with me for 20 minutes if you guys like this video give it a thumbs up and I'll catch you guys later bye guys